Hello, and today I thought I'd give you a little how-to on how to build your own mini pond in your back garden. So, what you need, you need an old box or something, it can be something big, something small, and as long as it holds water, then you're all good. I have a previous very small pond that we did, which turned into a bit more of a bird bath, but it's still good, it gives somewhere for the birds to wash out, and we'll use the water from that. We also have a pile of stones, um, and these are going to form part of the base and then we also have some gravel which will form the kind of the rest of the base of it and then we've also got a trusty trowel to help us level it out so we'll go through step by step and see what we can come up with so once you've got all your materials the next step in doing your pond is choosing a location so what you want to think when you're placing a pond is you want somewhere that's not in constant direct sunlight but you do want it to have some sun but also some shade so for us, we placed, we're going to place ours here. I've already dug out the shape of the trough so that it fits in nicely. And the idea behind this is it will get some nice early morning sun, but then it will also have some shade in the afternoon so it won't just cook. So really simple, place it in, make sure it's nice and, nice and kind of level. Um, and then the next step you want to do is what I would do is I'd get my gravel and... And the reason for the gravel is it just gives it a nice base and it will provide a few kind of places for some of the smaller insects and grubs to hide down in. So just spread that out a little bit. And then the next step is I'm going to start to put in some of the other rocks. I'm just scattering these around. And then we also have some big rocks and the big rocks are going to form shallow areas in the pond and these will be really good for um, kind of birds to come and sit on and bath in um, and it's really important to have a bit of a mixture of depths. The other really important thing to think about is if something goes in, so if a, a frog or a toad or something goes in, how is it also going to get out again? So make sure that in one area of the pond you place the rocks high enough that they can then get out of the pond again. So we'll do that in the back corner. Um, but I'll continue placing these rocks and then we'll come back to it. So I'm just placing the last few stones. And if you take a look, then what I've done is I've paid, paid, made a nice little ramp here, which means that the creatures will be able to get out to the back. Then also there's lots of little hidey holes in and around, which will play really good for things like dragonfly larvae that you might expect to get in here. And lots of little hole, hidey holes for things to be able to tuck themselves away and grow bigger and that's just what we want so now what we'll do is we do already have some water which looks rather grubby from our old pond so we're going to add that in so i'm going to be very gentle because we do already have a few things that are living in here but then the other thing to remember is actually now you want to wait for it to rain because the rain won't have any chemicals whereas your water from the tap will have some chemicals in it so I've chosen to do this on a day where we're expecting some rain later in the day so the final thing to do now is we'll bring some of the earth round and we'll just fill back fill around it and then we've just got to sit and wait for it to rain so if you go on the internet then on the Wildlife Trust websites and on our Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust website, you can find out how to build your own mini pond. And it gives you some tips about certain plants that you can plant as well, such as starwort um, and other water-based plants, which you can actually buy. And then you can place those in your pond and give it a head start. But in the meantime, if you share with us some photos and videos of what you get up to, then we'd love to see them.